Should have tossed that orange pumpkin out ages ago. Like four years ago. Hi, I am Nikki Clements, and I used to make stuff like this. So for Halloween this year, with the way things are, we got together with friends virtually and just had a Zoom call and played some Jackbox games. Now I wanted to be a little bit extra and have some fun with the background, so I put up the green screen. Now the last few times that I've hung it up in here, I actually just used some thumbtacks into the wall. So this time I wanted to do something a little bit more elegant. So I figured a simple clothing rod across the back of the room, that way I could just clamp the green screen to it and it'd make it super easy to hang any other kind of backdrop. Now the clothing rod socket things are fairly cheap. This one, for example, is like 98 cents at the grocery store, no less. So they're also quite easy to get a hold of. However, for the rod portion, I wanted to use some electrical conduit that I had and its diameter is considerably smaller than the rod that these are designed for, although you could make it work. But it was also getting quite late in the day, the Zoom call was starting in a few hours, and I figured I could probably make something in less time than it would take to go to the store and buy it. And I was right, so let me show you. All right, well I brought some of the shop into the studio. It's all windy and cold and dark and pressing out in the shop, so I figured this would be a whole lot nicer. Now to make my socket thing, I'm actually gonna use this big chunk of two inch dowel. Certainly not necessary by any means. You can make it out of any board and pretty much any shape and I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. But this is what I had on hand and I figured it would work really well. The first step is to drill a hole into the end of the dowel with a bit that is just slightly larger than whatever you're using as your clothing rod. In my case, three quarter inch conduit. So a seven eighth inch bit should be perfect. And I want to position the bit just a little bit off vertical center so that I have a little bit more material on the bottom than I do on the top. Um, it's really not crucial to get it perfect. Um, eyeballing it should be more than sufficient. So I have it clamped in a vise just for safety. It wouldn't be a bad idea to do this in a drill press, but we only need to go down about an inch and a half. And it's not super critical that the hole be perfectly straight up and down. So drilling it by hand shouldn't be a problem at all. Next step, over at the chop saw, I want to basically just cut off two rings. So about three quarters of an inch. Just making a mark on my saw so I know where to cut the next one. There's one. And there's two. Now I do have to drill that out. I didn't go down quite far enough, but that's no big deal. And now I need to cut out two more circles, the same width, just with no hole in the middle. Next, we need to remove this portion of material uh, from both rings. You could remove it from only one, do it more like how these are designed, where one's a full circle and one is open. I like it where both are open, that way you can just drop the pipe right in. Now, instead of being perfectly tangential to the edges, if we cut it in just a little bit so that it's basically the same size as our pipe, That'll make it so you kind of have to press fit the pipe down into it, slightly locking it in place, making it just a little bit harder for the pipe to pop out. And notice I'm putting this slot on the top where it's thinner. 
so we have the thicker portion on the bottom where the pipe's going to be resting. Now, as I said, you can pretty much make this from any old piece of wood, so let's chop off a few chunks of this board. Now, using some double-sided tape, I want to stick these two together. and make a second one. Now let's drill our hole through this one. Just go right in the middle. And now let's attach these two together as well. Now from here you could simply just square off all these edges and leave it at that, but we might as well go with the shape. There we go. A very lopsided saw. Uh, my blade is extremely dull. Um, any kind of shape this thick is asking a whole heck of a lot right now, but we'll see what it does. There we go. That qualifies as a shape, right? Now we can separate those two. And these two, I think we'll put the slot right there. All right, so I got my pieces all made. I'm just going to do a quick light sanding. That's plenty good for now. On to one of the final steps, gluing these two halves together. Now, of course, of course, there's no reason you couldn't just take a solid block, drill the hole halfway through, and simply chisel out that notch. No reason that wouldn't work. Perfectly valid way to do it. I prefer doing it in two halves. I think it's a bit easier being able to just take this to the bandsaw and making that notch. You can get into some of the areas a bit easier with the sandpaper as a separate piece. So it does add this whole step of gluing, but I kind of prefer that to messing around with chisels. I will say, if your reason for doing that would be for strength, if properly glued with wood glue, the glue will be stronger than the wood. That's to say that the wood will fail before the glue will fail. So as far as strength is concerned, these are pretty much the same. That said, I am going to be using some super glue an activator. It's fast, it's easy, and for something lightweight like a backdrop, it's more than adequate. And now we can glue our these together. What, which way do these go?
And that about does it. They are done. The only thing left to do is drill a few holes so we can mount them. Finally got a proper countersink bit. This just makes a recess so the screw head will sit flush. You can do it with a regular drill bit, but there's always a chance that it'll catch and start drilling a lot deeper than you want it to. So uh, this should be pretty nice. And there, the screw sits nice and flush and doesn't protrude above the surface. So countersinking is quite nice. You can also do a countersink with a Forstner bit, drilling out the larger hole first. You get a lot of control over the depth with a Forstner bit. And then with that recess drilled, you can go back in with your regular bit and drill out your hole. So there we go, we get that flush screw head. So looking at these, I, uh, I'm kind of seeing a shape. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm seeing something. Fine. Two hours later. It's my birthday! Patrick, closet rod sockets. Why? It's a few hours of my life, I won't get back. But there you go. I mean, you can literally make them any shape you want. Um, they're not that bad. But uh, yeah, I should definitely get a new bandsaw blade or just a new bandsaw. And there we go. Super easy. Uh, I think the dowel looks really nice, but as you can see, you can literally make them pretty much any shape you want. Uh, I mean, he's gonna be upside down, but uh, I guess if you really like SpongeBob, so I guess we might as well install them somewhere so you can just see it. Well, I don't actually need a closet rod anywhere currently, so I'm just gonna put it in front of my closet just to demonstrate. And uh, yeah, if you had any questions about uh, my wardrobe, well, there it is. So I'm just gonna screw this right about there. I'm just gonna use this block as a spacer, fit that right there, and drive in the screw. And then one more. And that is rock solid. Same thing over here on the other side, just using this block as a spacer. Positioning that right there. And now to measure how long we need to make the pole. And it looks like just shy of 46 inches. First, I guess I'll install the Patrick ones too. I don't know what that means. Yikes. Got my rod of conduit. 
I'll measure out about 45 and a half inches. So right about there ought to do. And I'm just gonna cut this off with a hacksaw. Now you can use whatever you want for the rod. I mean, you could use a wooden dowel. Uh, you could even use some PVC if the length is short enough. At short length, PVC is incredibly rigid, but it gets exponentially more flimsy the longer it gets. So whatever you wanna use for the rod, I like the conduit. It's nice and stiff and actually incredibly cheap. Got the rod all cut out, let's see if it fits. Snap it right into one end. There we go. I probably could hang on that for a few minutes, but uh, I'm not gonna. Might as well try out the SpongeBob one too. And as you can see, making that slot a little bit thinner does help keep this locked in place. So it takes a bit of force just to knock it out. That's quite nice. And Patrick works just as good too. This is the best birthday ever. Well, that's it. Uh, this went off the rails a bit, maybe, but uh, I think this is great. Uh, it's super easy, super elegant, extremely functional, and I think it looks really nice too. I mean, you could paint it or add some stain. I think it has a really kind of cool modernistic look to it. Uh, is everybody forgotten? Or, or that is an option too. But uh, I'm really happy with it. So hopefully if you need a closet rod somewhere, especially if you need one right now, uh, you can make your own. Anyway, my sincere thanks for watching. Once again, I am Nikki Clements. If you're wondering, Nikki short for Nicholas, and the D stands for Dutch. Anyway, I'm off to make something else.